defeated and then they had to withdraw and the, uh, the Hungary somewhat remained under the Ottoman control for 200 years. Eventually they were forced out of Hungary as well and then the Bosnia, Serbia, Romania remained a permanent Ottoman boundaries in terms of the uh, Christianity and Islam. But the relations between Christianity and Islam was not one-way relationship. Because in the 16th and 17th century, the tension between, uh, it starts with the 15th century as well, but especially in the 16th and 17th century, between Catholic Church and Protestant churches. Ottomans constantly played one group against the other. And there were alliance between Protestant uh, church and Ottomans against the Catholics, and then sometimes the alliance between Catholics and Ottomans against the Protestant churches. So it was a power game, uh, uh, very much rather than religion, but the pragmatic interest of the Christian Protestant Catholic principalities or the states and the Ottomans very much uh, dictated their attitude and policies. Uh, but the, um, the Ottoman Empire, as you know, put to an end uh, after World War I, and today's contemporary Turkish Republic emerged from the ashes of Ottoman Empire, and the, the Republic of Turkey very much identified itself as a European state because most of the founding fathers of the republics came from the Balkans. They were not ethnic Turks, but they were Muslims, like Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the uh, founding father of contemporary Turkey. He was born in Thessalonica, today's Greece, and his father was Albanian, his mother was Bosnian, and uh, he was um, very white, brownish, very much like the, you know, the Bosnians in terms of what they looked like. And most of the elite who created Turkish Republic uh, were from the Balkans, from the Southern Europe. Uh, why Muslims from Southern Europe became dominant over Arabs or Turkish Muslim or other Muslims because Ottoman army was a Janissary army, what is called Janissary system. It was a military system based on child taxation. What that meant, every Christian village required to give a certain percentage of their boys to Ottoman army between ages five to 10. If village or the family refuse to give their boy, they will be taken away by force. And these boys would be sent to different parts of the empire, they would be converted, they would not allow to get married, and they will know only one father, the Sultan, they will have one loyalty to Sultan. So this was the way how Ottoman Empire tried to overcome ethnic or tribal loyalty. In that sense, it provided stability to empire. Most of the Ottoman generals, bureaucracy, consisted of Christian children from the Balkans. So they always, for instance, Mehmed Ali Pasha, uh, who was the governor of Egypt later on, created the modern Egypt, was an Albanian. And so uh, even today, if you look at the Turkish political elite or the economic elite, they are mostly, their ethnic roots are uh, from the Balkans, from Southern Europe. So there is this ethnic orientation why the founding fathers of the Turkish Republic consider themselves as Euro European rather than Arab or Persian. And, and they wanted Turkey to become a European country, secular republic. So this is just one part, but we will come to Turkey again. Let me now go back to uh, Islam, contemporary Islam in Italy today. What is going on today in Italy? Today, uh, what we have, the figures, uh, that are close to 2.5 million foreign residents in Italy. 
and 34% of those 2.4 million are Muslim. And they one third uh, are from Morocco, one third from Albania, and other small populations are from Tunisia, Senegal, Egypt, Pakistan, and recently from Bangladesh. But the most of the Muslims in Italy are either from Albania or they are from Morocco. And there's not much problem what we read between Albanian Muslims and Italians because of the Mediterranean cultural historical affinity. But there are tension with Arab Muslims uh, between the Italian population and uh, these Arab Muslims. And uh, 50,000 out of this, uh, the total Muslim population is 820,000 Muslim live in Italy, legal resident. But some people argue that there is 100,000 illegal alien as well. So it's close to 1 million, the total Muslim population in Italy. Only 50,000 out of this 1 million are Italian citizen Muslim. And 30,000 out of 50,000 are Italian who converted to Islam. The Islam uh, somewhat um, gaining ground in the north, northern Italy, in the urban centers among intellectuals and young population. There is a conversion to Islam. Again, uh, among most of the young population and some intellectuals. It is very similar in the United States as well. What you find out, the young population, even in Utah, Salt Lake City, I know uh, usually the young population, uh, some of them uh, coming from very prominent Mormon families, they convert and become Muslim, and they uh, take these very excellent names. Uh, recently I had a student, he named himself Jihad. <laughs> and his, his grandfather is a professor in BYU. His father is a prominent person at the uh, BYU, at the church. And his grandfather actually wondered whether my class had anything to do with his conversion. He came and visited me and checked my syllabi, what I teach. Uh, I, but I think it happens sometimes, these young people, because they want to secede from the family, or they want to rebel against their father or grandfather, or they want to redefine themselves totally, like Malcolm X becoming Muslim, to secede, to redefine totally himself. The similar phenomena what I see going on in some European uh, countries as well, in Italy, in that sense. Most of the Muslims in Italy, they live in the north, 54%. Uh, are they live in the north, 29% in the center of Italy, and 40% in the south, um, 14. 14. And so what you have here uh, that um, Muslims usually they live in the, uh, in the north, northern Italy. There's also some in Sicily as well, but not big number in Sicily, usually the north where the economic um, activity goes on, you have a large number of Muslims uh, over there. Uh, the relations between uh, Muslim uh, uh, in Italy and the larger Italian community ups and downs. But what we are seeing is that there is an anti-Muslim feeling. It used to be more dominant several years ago, Berlusconi somewhat uh, has more liberal attitude, even though he's very conservative. But uh, in terms of his relations with the Muslim countries, his attitude toward Turkish membership, he is the most pro-Turkish leader in Europe, I would say, after Tony Blair the former British Prime Minister. He is the most pro-Turkish leader. He wants to see Turkey to become part of European Union and uh, also to